So with my season 15 video kind of doing well and with the release of the season 15 extended episodes, I kind of had to make a video on the subject. One thing in my video about season 15 I said is that the 40 minute episodes down from the usual one hour episodes we've been getting for the past seasons did hinder my enjoyment of it. The episodes felt rushed and I never got to really connect with the queens as much until later into the season when the hour episodes came back. And it just kind of hurt some of the challenges and runways, the meanings and the storyline and the whole structure of the episode it just kind of felt off so these extended episodes definitely felt like a godsend when they were announced and hopefully would fill the void in season 15 that i felt and now after watching them many times and watching all the new moments of season 15 the real question is did it work Oh my god, yes it did. This season is so much better with the extended episodes. Watching the season again with the extended episodes this time filled in that void that was missing the first time around. There is so much more to like chew on and engage with, which lets the audience connect with the queen more, making the eliminations more sad and also upping the stakes because you're connecting with these queens and you don't want them to go. The biggest impact the extended episodes had were fleshing the queens out more and adding to and creating storylines, which made the season feel more complete. There were also extra fun moments like more reads in the reading challenge, more shady moments, more workroom talk and emotional moments, letting you get to know the queens more. Extended parts and lip syncs as well, like in the Lala Perusa, and just extra parts of the challenge as well we didn't get to see. Instead of feeling rushed and over before it's already began, it tells a great journey each episode, leading to the challenge, runway critiques, lip sync and then the elimination. All the episodes definitely benefited from it, but I think the two that benefited the most were the Snatch Game episode and the Daytona Wins 2 episode, but also I think I also put the Crystal Ball episode as well. The Snatch game, well, it's just because we actually got to see everyone have a lot more of their Snatch game, so we got to see how actually well everyone did, but also we got to see the queens talking about their choices more, and the most important thing, actually talking to Rue about their choices. There is so much we missed in the Daytona Wins episode, we just got to see more like just funny moments from Mistress and Malaysia, but also Rue directing more in the acting challenge, and with the Crystal Ball, there's just more focus on them making the outfits, but honestly, all episodes were so much better, it didn't feel rushed and empty, and I really enjoyed it this time around. There are lots of new sections like the queens talking about the experience of religion and talking about the relationships with their family and a great part talking about sitcoms which then devolves into Spice talking about her favourite reality shows, completely missing the point. But also just seeing general one-to-one -one moments with Rue and the queens in the workroom was just so missed because it just shows Rue's opinions and views on the queen and perspective but also what she thinks she can improve on or where to go to next. One of the biggest upgrades was having the judges deliberation when they cut that out completely for most of the episodes up until the one hour episodes are back. I know they're not the most exciting parts of the episodes and some people don't really care for them at all, but for me, missing out on it took away the insight on what the judges thought of the queens and the performances and their critiques that backed up their eventual decisions as well. No matter whether you agreed with the judging or not, seeing their deliberations and more in-depth thoughts on the queens backed up what they thought and helped me understand I think most queens benefited from the new extended episodes, giving them more storylines, moments or memorable parts. I wrote down something for each queen and how the new edits affect them, if not or at all. For Princess Poppy, I think nothing changed too much just because she was only in one extra episode of the season. We just saw more of her talking about her ideas in All Queens Go To Heaven and them not being received that well in the end product. She talked about not being that confident for teammates because two, Lucy and Amethyst were in the bottom three the week before and that Aura and Spice weren't really seen as like common queens all that good with humor so far which is kind of ironic because she was like the one to actually go home that week the other thing was that during the critiques they actually showed a clip of her saying that her metallic runway that she was wearing then was a backup to the original one because the designer had messed up and it's nice to have that so it just gives context also shows the queen sticking up for themselves it was nice to see it but also poppy already talked about it when the og episode aired because i think she was like viewing passing talking about it but it's just nice to see that for sugar we definitely got to see a lot more of sugar in the episode she was in, which is not surprising considering the twins were a massive part of the season. It showed a lot more of her working in a group about Spice and portrayed her as mo more of an outcast who the queens didn't really get along with at first and the judges kept saying about both twins that they are kind of wanted more and breaking out of that brat doll box for them to go further. But I think for Sugar and eventually Spice that kind of didn't work out for them. She's just so more blasé and naive but in an endearing and funny way and just not really annoying at all. Just the perfect entertainment from her.
Honestly, I'm just gonna say it. These new episodes made me fall in love with Amethyst even more, and she probably benefits the most from new edits. It basically added to what I already felt about her. She is clearly talented and very clever and very witty, but her self-doubt and maybe lack of experience always got the best of her. The extra confessionals and moments in the workroom just added to her character, and we saw both the clever side of her, but also when the self-doubt started to settle in. One new part that really stood out to me was when RuPaul said to Amethyst during the walkthrough in the Snatch game. Watching how quick your brain is to interpret the lyrics yeah. is really smart. And I can tell you're very funny and smart. Oh, thank you, Rose. That's gonna help. You know, I, I, have. I have a feeling you can do that. Even watching you lip sync. Twice. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know too much about her, but I am looking forward to filling in the blanks. It's so yeah. brilliant. Yeah. There's so much to work with. Hearing her say that is that boost that I needed for my confidence. And I'm ready for redemption. So you can see that Rue did see something in her, she was waiting for it. RuPaul also did say during the deliberation on the All Queens Go To Heaven episode that if anybody could catch up, it was Amethyst, but that she needed to hurry up and catch up. So realistically, I think the judges, especially Rue, could see that there was definitely something to her to be interested in. It's just unfortunately, she just never got to that place. Although I would say, I feel like because there's two Snatch Games and so many Queens, there should have been an extra high and low placement for Snatch Game. And honestly, I think Amethyst should have been high for Snatch Game because her tan number was actually really good. Overall, I think Amethyst Amethyst definitely benefited from the new edit and honestly I'm pinning her down as someone who could do well in the future All Stars or versus the World season. Robin got the short end of the stick in the original edit having little to no confessionals or screen time each episode, only really being there when they talked about her past relationship with Amethyst. She did get a little bit more this time, somewhat alright, like an extra confessional or commenting about another queen, but she really got the beating in the Snatch Game, where the edit presented her as unconfident and not sure about her Snatch Game choice or how she would approach Snatch Game when RuPaul asked her about it, but also she just didn't do too well in the Snatch Game, I'm not gonna lie. There was an overall storyline peeking through being very that her reservedness and quietness held her back and eventually sent her home, which is something I guess for the storyline, but it's not great and I just kind of wish we got more of her. I love how awkward Aura can be sometimes, but she does have this spark in her presence and performance that just shows that she is in that competition to win it. We again see her be more vulnerable and there's actually a part where she actually talks about her dad's passing and how that's affected her in the competition and why she wants to do well, which does an exponential amount for a character and story, but also shows how important her win and the whole competition is to her. And I think it's important to have those moments as we get to understand and connect with a queen more. But other than that, we get a few confessionals or workroom moments, but that's really it for her. I think Jax was done a little bit more dirty this time, especially in the commercial challenge episode, where she seemed to be in conflict with most of the group, and with Amethyst for not picking her for a group. But she is also shown to have a more fun and humorous side after that, especially in the confessionals, and having a lot more of those makes her feel like a core part of the season. RuPaul did call her a star, which is a good sign. So whilst she does deserve better parts of the competition, I'm glad to see her be portrayed as more than a one-dimensional character. Spice is just as unhinged as ever. We see how close she is with the other queens and how she's just having fun even without sugar. Whilst at first we see more of her struggling with sugar's elimination, we soon see her coming out of her own shell. And she's normally one to be edited to be the one cracking to be the one cracking jokes or having a punchline after like a convo or serious moment or at the start of a section kind of breaking the ice. I think she in production kind of knew she wasn't going to win. So they decided to have some fun with her instead. We see Malaysia being part of the conversation about being able to sew versus having style, basically saying that that a queen can sew pretty well, but if she has like no sense of style, some queens might not be able to sew, but can still make a good garment just because they have that sense of style. And I think that's kind of an interesting conversation to have, which kind of pays off because in the end, Malaysia only took one sewing class and she wasn't very confident with her sewing skills, yet she still makes a pretty good garment and is high for it. So that kind of pays off a little storyline there. Her little rivalry with Mistress, I love so much because when it's not like that personal, it's just such a fun part of the season. Marsha just has like a lot more kind of confessionals really or like more like reactionary confessionals like there's something shady might be happening or someone might say something and it'll cut to Marsha like side eyeing or like looking giving like a reaction confessional a lot of the time but at the same time not too much has changed kind of like a lot the same other than her makeup being kind of like the B plot as Spice said of the season Marsha herself didn't really have as much of a storyline so we kind of got more little moments of her but not too much poor Marsha.
Selena was already the confessional queen of the series, so we just got more of that absolute gold to adore at. Also, I noticed how RuPaul found Selena's name, which is really funny to say as well, which is really fun to watch. I think it's a lot of the same, and I think with most queens who went far, especially the queens who got to have a lot more because they were in the um, worn hour episodes at the kind of the end of the season, I feel like the main things we got were like the same, with just like a little bit more storylines. Obviously, Selena, like I said, being the confessional queen, we've got a lot more funny confessionals, but I just loved how unhinged she can be in most of the challenges and she really went for it. Honestly, Lucy was kind of like the main character for most of the season. So what we already had of her it was kind of like the same with the new edit as well. I think it showed a little bit more of, I guess, delusional moments and her being incredibly confident with herself, as she should. Like one time she just proclaimed herself the front runner and was like, you know what? You go, girl. Of course you are. I think Lucy is extremely entertaining this season, and especially when she has kind of her, her moments, she is absolutely great. Now going to the top four, I think it's a lot of the same. And I think it's because... Again, we got them throughout the whole entire season, so there wasn't too much to add to them. Like with Anitra, she does talk a lot more about her upbringing and also the fact that, that it was RuPaul who suggested to her to play like Gordon Ramsay's sister or, or female version of Gordon Ramsay instead of Gordon Ramsay himself. Also, the more we saw of her Snatch Game, she was actually pretty funny as well. And I wish we got to see that more because Anitra does have this like pretty good quick humour that's just kind of slapstick. And I wish we got to see more of that. Another really good part that was completely cut out of the season, which I don't know why because it being such good part was Anitra explaining the origin of the scar on her eye like that's like such an obvious good point to talk about it's just a shame we didn't get to see that on the original season because I think that would have added so much to her character as well I'm so surprised that didn't make the original edit like as well with Lux, we got a lot of the same things we already knew about her. I like how she is always in convo with the other queens. Like when they are getting ready in the mirror, she's always want asking questions or bringing up in topics and talking about it. Like she knows she's on TV, but she also brings great insight to a lot of those topics. And she's just very good at speaking about those topics and bringing her own perspective to it. I think you also see her relationship with other queens. I kind of see how close her and Marsha are, which is really nice to see. But I think overall what we kind of get of Lux is the same. But at the same time, because I love Lux so much, I'm very happy with whatever we get from her. I think Mistress out of the top four was one who got the most out of the edit. One of the biggest parts is that in the Snatch Game talk through, Rue said to her that she feels that she thinks Mistress is very reserved, which comes to the shot to Mistress, the rest of the queens and the audience, as we know that Mistress ain't reserved at all. But it also kind of shows her that she kind of needs to step it up, which she does in Snatch Game. And kind of from then on out, she gets better and better and shows more through. Like each week, Michelle said to her, you know, I'm watching you or you'll keep surprising me, Mistress, keep it up. We also see the extended talk about her Malaysia talk about their families and how drag is so important to her as that's the reason she just kept going and found her chosen family which is great. I feel like we also see her just being a lot more vulnerable especially in front of the judges in front of the queens so she's not just seen as this oh she's like the drama queen of season stirring up shit and having fun but she also has you know a lot going for her and that's why she is one of the best parts of the season. Obviously with Sasha watching this for the first time, but also knowing that she wins, made a lot of her parts stand out more. There's a lot of her being seen as kind of like the mother of the season and the queens looking to her approval. Obviously there was massive expectations on her from the other queens, from the people watching, from Sasha herself, from the judges onto Sasha. But the fact is that because she's doing so well, she's almost seen as the standard of the season, which again kind of shows why she won in the end because she is the standard. And yeah, but the judges are also just obsessed with her as they should be. And I think Sasha going above and beyond those expectations and killing the competition must have been so fun to see for them. There's probably more I could talk about for each of the queens and I'll probably re-watch the season over and over again and find different stuff to talk about them. But really, that's the overview of what I got. But I think most queens did benefit for some things, but I think every single queen got a little bit more to add to their story, which made them more interesting. So in conclusion, the extended versions of season 15 makes it just so much better and more enjoyable. It's finding the couple of missing pieces to a jigsaw puzzle and then the full picture being complete and you just see how amazing the season and the queens are. I said in my season 15 retrospective, that the more I think about the season, the more I love it. And the release of the extended episodes just proves that season 15 is probably one of the best Drag Race seasons and probably one of my favourites as well. Out of all the modern Drag Race seasons, let's say, I would say season 15 is probably one of the best to start on because it just includes everything on what's just good about Drag Race. Now I'm gonna watch it all over again because talking about it makes me miss it more.